National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sills. Please hit the like button. Chris Landry, we break down the Eagles and your favorite football team's draft in hour number three at 5.30 Eastern time. By the way, we're going to talk to top edge rushers that are in the NFL draft, and I've got a number next to them on what their talent evaluation is, according to some pro personnel people, on what they are like the best player, number one. The second player, um, that's the best edge rusher, number seven. Okay, so we're going to do that. We'll do that here in a minute. It's interesting, isn't it, that the Cardinals are willing to trade the number three pick. Do, first off, let's do this. I happen to agree with you guys. I think you guys are close to winning it. I do. I think you're close. If you knew that there was a player at three that could help you win the Super Bowl today, what would you be willing to do to get that Super Bowl? Ask yourself that. You keep telling me your general manager is a gambler. Okay? Here's a gamble. Third pick in the draft. Third pick in the draft. What would you give up for it? Okay. Cody goes, um, I thought we were missing the playoffs. This roster will. I still think you've got opportunities to get to the to the Super Bowl. But not with that defense. You, you, you there's too many outliers, too many question marks, too much potential, too much wishful thinking. Your linebacking course sucks, your safety position sucks. Your depth sucks. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't hold back. Your offense is a Super Bowl offense. It's got to be leaned on. And your depth is gone in your old line. But if you do this right, you could help yourself. A Devin White stops the bleeding. A move to get one of these superstar players. There's only three guys in the draft. Whole team does not suck. Nobody. I, I I can't believe some of the shit that goes through your head and you guys, how you process it. I'm here trying to improve the roster and you're telling me I'm bashing the roster or I'm bashing the Eagles. I don't give a shit about N'Kobe Dean. He showed me nothing. Son. I don't hand out starting assignments. You earn them in my book and on my roster. I'll tell you the biggest nightmare for you guys. Don't let Milton Williams outplay Jordan Davis this year. Because then Davis is a bust. <laughs> don't let him outplay him. I think he has a chance to. I think he has a chance to. Um, the I love Arthur. Nicobe Dean's a baller. I must have missed them games. Oh, wait, I did. I remember seeing them against Chattanooga, Tennessee. They were great games. When they played Tennessee, Chattanooga, or Citadel. Great. Nah, he was good in college. He was. All right. I'm, I'm, how, much would you, how much would you surrender to get up to number three? What would you surrender? If you could get Will Anderson on your team, would you change? Would you? Would you? Because get this. Think about this. Arizona needs an edge rusher. They could easily flip spots with the Eagles and get their guy at ten. They're looking for an edge rusher. Why not? Why not flip? Murphy helps them rebuild. They're rebuilding on defense. Arizona's not going to the Super Bowl. You get your edge rusher at ten, and you get them five million dollars cheaper than at three. 
Eagles jump up there and they get Will Anderson. And you've got a relationship with Jonathan Gannon. And you've got an organization who's dealing with some bullshit themselves inside with the Bidwell family in the front office of the NFL. I don't know. Isn't this a Howie Roseman take advantage moment? Is it, is it this tone what you talk about being in the Howie globe? Well, you know, Arizona's going through some shit themselves with the Bidwells. We have, we have a relationship with Jonathan Gannon. You know, we did let him talk in the bye week to Arizona. We, we, we already knew. Get this. When Frank Wright came on here and told us that he had been approached during the Super Bowl bye week on being the offensive coordinator of the Eagles, that's when I knew Jonathan Gannon was offered the job in Arizona. Jonathan Gannon was offered the job in Arizona because Frank Wright came on here and said, yeah, Philadelphia reached out to me. Go back and listen to the interview. Philadelphia reached out to me on becoming the offensive coordinator in Philly. Well, what did that – well, where – where where was Shane Steichen going? Oh, Shane Steichen, too, was going to Indy. Both those coordinators were earmarked for gigs, Indianapolis and Arizona. So at three, Gannon goes like this. Thank you, Philadelphia, for all the things you did. I don't know if Arizona could pass on Will Anderson, though. I don't know if he could pass on him. I think he's the next Cornelius Bennett. Okay, I think he's the next Bennett, and I don't know if I want to pass on Cornelius Bennett. <laughs> okay, I mean, that guy, that guy is the best player in the draft. So the Eagles would have to give something up. If, I don't believe it would take 10 and 30 to get to three. I think you could use some of next year's picks to go up there and get them. And get this, Arizona might land on Tyree Wilson at 10 and get their guy anyway. And like I said, you collected more draft choices for your rebuild. You got a quality player and starter. You got one of the better players in the draft still. Arizona comes out of it, no harm, no foul. And they help their football team with more draft picks. I don't know. How's that bad for Arizona? Arizona doesn't look, they don't look bad in that if they made that move. I'll move down to 10, get my edge rusher, whether it's Tyree Wilson or Miles Murphy, whomever, the Nest kid from Iowa. You get your edge rusher, you get more multiple picks, and you're in a rebuild. I don't know. And the Eagles get Will Anderson. Will Anderson is the best player in the draft. Okay? I would do something like that. So Will Anderson and Hassan Redick are your edge rushers. What's the size on Anderson? He's 6'4", six, two, he's six, four, 255. That's, he's bigger than Micah Parsons. He's bigger than Parsons. And by the way, in the NFC East, then you would have Chase Young, Micah Parsons, and Will Anderson in the NFC East. <laughs> hey, you better have your quarterback protected. <laughs> you better have a good old line, and the Eagles do. Hey, you put Anderson on your team with Reddick. Boy, you better have some good left offensive tackles in the NFC East because there's some pass rushers. Brian goes, why would Arizona give up three? Multiple picks. I just said it. You move down to 10. You move down to 10. You get twos and threes. Maybe seconds next year. Maybe he would give the 30th pick up. Maybe he would, Howie. Would it take 10 and 30 to get to three? I'm not sure about that. Because the 10th pick has some quality to it. If the Eagles draft Will Anderson, they'll have their counter to Parsons and Chase Young. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I personally think Chase Young's better. He's just got to stay on the ball field. Chico goes, Sills, I'm not saying Dean is good, but what makes you believe he's not good? Because he never played. He couldn't beat out a free agent, two free agent linebackers. He's the steal of the draft, Chico. The steal of the draft, I was told. He couldn't beat out two free agent linebackers. He couldn't beat out Kaiser White. Yeah, really? He didn't he he couldn't beat Kaiser White. He was never beating Kaiser White out. That's like the kid at Iowa. Never started. He was a situational pass rusher at Iowa. Not me. There's too much indis- there's too much there's too much opportunity for failure with that. So is he good against the run? Obviously not. He couldn't play in the Big Ten against the run. What makes you think you could play in the NFC East against the run? You know, they run the ball in the East. The Cowboys run the ball. The Giants run the ball. The Eagles run the ball. But I'm, 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 you're trying to convince me that a guy who couldn't play the run in the Big Ten is going to be able to play the run in the NFC East. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to pass on that kid. Okay. Dean only played 3% of the snaps and couldn't beat out Kaiser White. And that was on a one-year deal, and the Eagles owed White nothing. Nothing. They were probably hoping that N'Kobe Dean beat him out as the year went. How would you not? I would. If I was the general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles, I'd be praying every day and telling Jonathan Gannon, get Dean on the field. Get Dean on the field. Get Dean on the field. Gannon probably told him this. You know why I know Gannon told him this? I'll tell you why in a second. Gannon was probably telling Sirianni and Howie Roseman, he's not good enough. And why would I say that? Because Gannon just gave him $5.5 million to go to Arizona with him. If he was good enough, why would Gannon have signed Kaiser White? Use your brains. If Dean was better, he would have been on the field. He clearly didn't show enough to touch grass more than 34 snaps. This guy had 34 snaps in 2022. Gannon told him he's not good enough. Th- that's why Kaiser's in Arizona now. A wise man once told me that N'Kobe Dean was the steal of the draft. <laughs> oh, who was that? I never... F- ever said that not me Gannon likes Kaiser oh okay so a free agent on a one year deal who the Eagles were praying was beat out because they drafted a dude in the third round couldn't do it hmm okay (laughs) all right Let me get to this topic here with Howie Roseman and with Jalen Hurts here. Let's, 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 I want you to do something here and understand something. I don't like anyone enough to give them 6 million. (laughs) They better produce. That's right. Jonathan Cannon had to be telling those guys the whole time he's not good enough. I, I I didn't say Dean's trash. He wasn't better than Kaiser White. And it's funny when you listen to like the people on the radio or you read them in print, Kaiser White had a solid season. So you think Kaiser White had a solid season. What did the Kobe Dean have? A non-productive season. Zero production. Zero. Nothing. Non-factor. It was like being redshirted. May 2nd, 2022, I could find timestamp. Whatever, dude. Steal of the... Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Please do it. I never said that. (laughs) That wasn't my take. Steal of the draft. That was the people in Philly talking. Whatever, guy. Again, you, you're probably the same dude that said that the Jalen Hurts pick in the second round a couple of years ago was a great pick, too. Okay. 
Bijan's a bad pick at 10? Yeah. So what's a better pick at 10? Yeah, tell me what you think is a better pick at 10. Okay? What's a better pick at 10 then? Tell me what a better pick at 10 is. Follow the money. That's Kaiser play. He made 5 million. What's a better pick, Yale, at 10? Use 10 for Carter? <laughs> okay, if Carter's there, Carter or Bijan, okay, probably taking the DT because he's Jerome Brown. But Mike Golick yesterday compared, compared what, who would you rather have on the team, Jerome Brown or Marshall Falk? Seals, would you pick Anderson over Carter? Probably. Close. Two best players in the draft. Close. Who would you rather have on your team, Marshall Falk or Jerome Brown? Who? Because Mike Golick yesterday compared B. John Robinson to Marshall Falk. Who helps your football team more? Jerome? Jalen Carter? Or B. John Robinson, Marshall Falk? According to Mike Golick, I happen to think he's a great player too. Falk for the longevity. Yeah, because he helps your quarterback. Okay, and you're right, Neil. Offense is the focus. Why pay Kaiser to come off the bench for a rookie? Kaiser White did make $5 million last year. He made one5 He made $1.5 million last year in Philadelphia. Now he makes $5.5 million. He signed a $10 million contract. Okay? He didn't make that money last year in Philly. You crazy? He made a million and a half. Don't you remember how they got him from the Chargers? Chargers let him go. Why would Howie pay a linebacker five and a half million dollars? That was why would he do that? Okay. And plus the owner of the Eagles wants to have a high powered offense. All right, let me do this here. It's funny yesterday, we didn't even get to the second topic until like the final segment. There's so much going on. Last year's draft and this year's draft. Do you believe it will determine Jalen Hurts' success as an Eagle? What they do in the draft last year and this year, how much impact do you think that that has on the success on whether or not Jalen Hurts will be given a chance to win the Super Bowl? How much of an impact do you think? Knowing how he's history. I think how he's got a lot of pressure on him. Last year's draft. So far, how about this? What, do, what? Why don't we do this, Tone? Incomplete. On April 11th, incomplete. You got nothing out of your first rounder. You got nothing out of your second rounder. And you got nothing out of your third rounder. So it's kind of incomplete. Is that fair? Incomplete. So last year's draft had nothing to do with the success that Jalen Hurts had last year. Nothing. Zero. No impact at all, actually. Right? You think how he could go through another draft where he doesn't have any players in the draft have impact on the success of Jalen Hurts and get away with it again? Don't you understand how I'm pointing out to you all the things that Howie, you guys keep talking to me about how good he is. He does not use the draft to have impactful players on the football team top to bottom. 
Let's take a look at that, for instance. Look at the premium picks. How many first rounders? <laughs> Let's take a look at this. How many first rounders has Howie Roseman drafted that are in your offensive huddle? Let's just take a look at this. Lane? Devante? Two. There's two players that Howie has drafted on offense in your offensive huddle. Let's take a look at that on defense now. Fletcher. Brandon. Jordan Davis. He's a starter now. So out of your 22 players, five players are first rounders. Five that you drafted. Five. Two on offense. Three on defense. Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, and Brandon Graham. I'm 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 missing it here. You 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 there's they got two first rounders in your offensive huddle. I think he's got to get it. He's got more success in the latter rounds because that's where the players, like I said the other day, fall more in line. Okay. Yale goes, I can't complain because they're winning. Yeah, but they're not winning the way you think they're winning through the draft. They're not winning football games through the draft. They're not winning football games through the draft. Baltimore won games through the draft. Pittsburgh won games through the draft. Seattle won games through the draft. Okay? General goes, how many should we have? Good question. Because, quite frankly, the Patriots had none during their Super Bowl time. I think maybe the offensive, they had an offensive lineman. I think Brady had only – I know he had never won a Super Bowl with a skilled player that was drafted in the first round his entire 19 years in New England. No one. He never played with one uh, – maybe Sonny Michelle was a first-rounder. I, I got to check that out. I think Michelle won a, won a Super Bowl up there with them, so maybe him. But um, in Brady's 19 years up there, the um, wide receivers were all cast-offs. Uh, free agents, and kind of the same way how he builds his team. They were never drafting wide receivers. They were, I mean, none of those guys. Okay? None of those guys. Okay, you're right. And to Yale's point, they're winning. But when you guys start talking to me about the Eagles rebuilding the team through the draft – how he's got to be, keep rebuilding this team through free agency and trades. It's the only way they're going to do it. They're not going to land on anybody that's going to make an impact. They don't. It's not a rip because you're winning. Correct. This is not an exercise in shitting on anyone. It's an exercise on making you understand this draft in two weeks is more about Gathering assets to make trades for A.J. Brown, for Darius Slay, for C.J., for a potential move for Devin White. It's not to sit here and pick Miles Murphy at freaking 10. 
This is not who they are. Don't you see that? You got two dudes in your offensive huddle right now. I could go like this to you with that Charger team. The Chargers have a boatload on both sides of the ball first round draft choices. Okay? Are they winning? No, because you know why? They don't get free agency right. They don't get the head coaching right. They don't, they get so many, like we talked about the other day with environment. Our entire offense is draft picks, except for AJ. You must again not heard me. How many first round draft choices do you have in your offensive huddle? Two. You're making it sound like he's some sort of sensational premium pick guy. Bro, he didn't draft Jalen Hurts to be the starting quarterback. He fell into it. Same way Belichick fell into Brady. He fell into it. That was a He fell into Malata. Seventh round pick. Well, if he's so great, he should have went in the seventh pick. When you're that late in the draft, it's not skill. It's luck. You think Patriots were skilled at drafting Brady in the sixth round. Do you truly believe that? That the the Patriots were like, hey, we're fooling everyone. We're going to take five stiffs in front of Brady, and then we're going to strike with Brady in the sixth round. Come on, man. You sound like stupid-ass Bill Polian talking. You sound like dummy Polian talking. You, we had a first round evaluation on Tom Brady. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Called research. Okay. <laughs> it's called being dumb. Stoutland told Howie to take a shot at Mulata. Yeah, the best coach in the NFL. Sure he did. Hey, you think there's any coincidence too? You got the best offensive line coach in the National Football League, and that's your strongest position on your field? Duh. And it's the most expensive. Everyone goes, the Eagles have the best O-line. You better, man. It's the most expensive O-line in the league. The Eagles have the most expensive offensive line in the NFL. You better have the best. You're getting your return on investment there. You're damn right. $50 million in three players. (laughs) Okay, well. Howie's second rounders are top tier. Yeah, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Why is that? Because you're picking best player available. You're not picking on need. You're taking the best player available. Not on your needs. When he starts picking in his in his needs, he puts a sheet like this together. 40 DBs he's drafted since 2000. Terrible record. That's right, Neil. You're not overdrafting in ladder rounds. Players are falling in line. Next best guy, next guy up. Hey, what do we need here? We need a defensive end or we need a defensive tackle or offensive tackle. Well, let's take the best player there. Okay. Take the OT. I'd rather take the best player available than a need position because that's how it's the prime way of overdrafting. That's why the quarterbacks all have fail. Anthony Richardson is going to be drafted. Who in their right mind would draft a quarterback? How many people watched Anthony Richardson play football at Florida last year? Were you blown away by him? Honest to God, I watched Anthony. The guy at Tennessee's better. That the, the hooker kid, in my opinion, I think he's better. But Richardson, because he does backflips, he blew people away at the combines, you know, all that other bullshit. You know, I mean, the the pro day and all that stuff, dumb stuff that doesn't matter. You you know those drills that you do at the uh, combines? You'll never do those ever again in your entire career. Did you know that? You trained for that shit. You will never, ever do those drills again in your life. You'll never do that again. So you train one time for it. You blow people away and you get drafted because you're a good dude in the weight room. 55% 55% completion percentage in the SEC. And then I'm going to turn around and think he's going to improve. Come on, man. 
come on, man. Oh, so like this this guy here, Anthony Richardson, you would take with the fifth pick. Man, good luck. Dude, the only guy that I would take of those quarterbacks that look like it's worth the shit is the shrimp. Bryce Young. Guy needs a Tokyo phone book to look you in the eye. I'm like, dude, he's 5'10 and a half. He's 185, 190. Huh? Is he the best player at that position? Yes. Yes. If cards take Anderson and the Bears take Carter and Dallas trades up to take Bijan, then what is your recommendation? If Tyree Wilson's not there at 10, I'm out of there. Trade down. Get out of there. Or trade down. Call Tampa. Give me Devin White. I saved my draft. And I put a fixture in my defense for the next decade. And you win the draft. Hey, tell me if you think you win the draft with this one. Okay? Tell me tell me if you think you would win the – how many people think the Eagles had a great draft last year? I think it was not bad because A.J. was involved in it. Okay? With all the maneuvering, the draft itself was not anything for the Eagles. But the maneuvering in the draft was because you landed A.J. Brown. You didn't pick a player. You went and got a player. That's what I think he's going to do again. You know, I, I first thought it was going to be the Simmons kid, but now it looks like Tennessee is vested in him. I'll tell you something else. If I'm the Eagles, I'm a little concerned that Dallas is kicking the tires on Derrick Henry and wants to land on B.J. Robinson. Because B.J. Robinson in that offense helps Dallas big time. Helps Dallas big time. If, 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 if Howie does this, he drafts Paris Johnson at 10, which is not a bad deal. Why? Because it helps Jalen Hurts. You get a true offensive lineman. You're not going to get anything out of – you're clearly not going to get anything out of your second pick this coming year again because you're going to move Paris over. Paris is going to be next to next to, – because that's the guy who eventually is going to take over for Lane. I don't have a – by the way, taking an offensive lineman at 10, Paris Johnson, or the kid from Northwestern, I, I, that's not bad. Why? It helps Jalen. And it kind of helps you in your Super Bowl quest. Still a question mark on Jurgens can go over there and play. He ain't the biggest dude. He's a center. That's a different skill set. You put a horse like that, that kid from Ohio State in there, Hey, you got something in there again where it could be an upgrade from Sayamalo. That offensive line is imperative on the success of Jalen Hurts' success. Okay? Dude, you can't lose that line. I'd rather lose A.J. Brown than that offensive line for Jalen Hurts. Because you, you can win games multiple ways because Devontae's going to come into himself. Bijan is a must for the Eagles. They won't go there, though. Correct. They lost Isaac in a backup dealer. They have no depth there. Jack Driscoll's okay. But again, I call him the floating buoy. He just grabs on and hangs on for life. They need more in that conversation in there. AJ's disposable long-term anyway. Not yet. Not yet. I want him around another two years, at least through 24. A.J. Brown, at least through 24. Got to have him in there because this is what's going to happen. The more that Devontae plays and the better Devontae gets, you're not having – so you think you're going to have two $25 million wide receivers and a $50 million quarterback? <laughs> that ain't working. That ain't happening. Cap's only going up 16 – 16 million a year. <laughs> These salaries are outpacing the caps raise and rise um, every year. It only went up $16 million. And that's all it's going to go up again. It's going to go up between 16 and $18 million. 
That's not enough to have a hundred million dollars wrapped up in two players or three players. And then you still got that. Look at this. So Devontae makes 20. AJ makes 20. Lane makes 15. Mulata makes 15. Kelsey will probably be gone. Jalen makes 50. So you think it what, what you gotta have $200 million on one side of the ball and $40 million on the other side? You'll never win. Take Paris or the dude from Northwestern. That's the safe pick, Yale. That's the safe way. That's that's the because it helps the team win this year. Get this. So, hey, Tone, I said Matt Ariza flips the field on you. Matt Ariza flips the field. Devin White solidifies your defense. Okay? And the offensive lineman at 10, if those other guys aren't there, helps you win a Super Bowl. But I'm dogging people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're trying to eliminate failure, which has been no- notable over 23 years. You have a ton of failure. You don't win Super Bowls with your draft. You don't get Super Bowls with you. You didn't get to the Super Bowl last year with your draft. You got to Super Bowls last year with free agent moves. AJ, your defense, Hassan, your corners, your linebackers, your defensive tackle. Again, team gets you there. Not one side of the ball. A.J. Brown had $40 million guaranteed on his new contract. The Eagles can get out of 2025 with only 15 four dead cap. That's why I say, Tone, through 24, the Steel was still having Brown on his rookie deal. In 22, his new contract kicks in this year. I don't see him living. He'll never live out that contract here. Same with Slay. That's why they gave Slay the upfront money. Nobody's under the impression Slay's going to live out his contract or A.J. Brown's going to play out his contract here. You want Devontae to keep continuing to improve because then you replace that guy. You want to help. You want to see Devontae. It keeps your, it keeps your salary cap healthy. Yeah. AJ Brown's not living out that contract. What are you nuts? How many people live out those contracts? Ask Odell Beckham. Ask Derek Carr. Ask any of the quarterbacks to sign them long term deals. I think Dak's in trouble. Okay. I think Dak's in trouble. Um, Here are your best edge rushers. And by the way, I put a number next to them because I got this sheet from an NFL team. And this is the player ranking for the guys. What do you guys think Will Anderson's uh, ranking was according to this NFL team? <clears throat> what do you think his his ranking was? Of all 300 players that are potentially going to get drafted, what do you think his ranking was? By the way, don't forget at 5.30 Eastern, our draft expert, Chris Landry, is going to join us, and we're going to go over the Eagle draft. One, two, two. You're right, one. Six, four, 253. He's the number one rated player in the draft. Doesn't mean he'll go number one, but he's the number one player. Can you imagine getting him at three? You underdraft, you get a value pick. See, look, you're looking at your 10th pick to move up. You would get the best player in the draft at three. That's a bad move. Those are the moves you, those are the moves you covet. What you don't want to do is draft a guy who's rated the 25th defensive tackle and take him 13. That's overdrafting. That's overdrafting. 
The second best edge rusher is Tyree Wilson. 6'6", 271. I love that size. Um, What ranking do you think he is? According to his this NFL team. Yeah, but Yale, he's looking for an edge rusher. You can get an edge rusher at 10. You can get an edge rusher at 10. Chico, Neil, very good. Five. He is the fifth rated player in the NFL draft. So if the Eagles draft Tyree Wilson at 10, that's a good pick. Okay? That's a good pick. I don't know if I agree with this one. Nolan Smith is ranked 18th. 6'2", 238. He's the 18th best football player on the board. 6'2", 238. Hassan Reddick, kind of size. Reddick, 6'1". I think you'd have to, I mean putting another small dude on the other side of a small defense. I don't know that, but again, taking Nolan Smith at 10 makes no sense. Trading down to get Nolan Smith makes sense. But once you're out of the top 10, Nolan Smith is not a top 10 player. Why would you draft him 10th? Do you understand that this is the problem that you get with people when they evaluate the draft? I'll take Nolan Smith at 10 and not BJ Robinson B.J. Robinson's the fifth best player in the draft and or sixth best player in the draft, but you'll take a guy who's ranked 17th at 10. That's how you fail in the draft. Here, Miles Murphy. I, I, I don't mean to use his name in a negative way because he's a good football player. He played and had a great and fabulous career at Clemson. He's ranked 22nd, though. Taking him at 10? Holy cow. Really? <laughs> oh, that's the 30th pick if you're lucky. You get Miles Murphy at 30? That's the pick. Um, Will McDonald, 27th best edge. He's the 27th best player. From Iowa State, 6'3", 239. I'm showing you how to draft and not get your face pushed in and how you do this. Who in their right mind would draft Will McDonald? There are teams that will do this. Will McDonald's the 27th best player. If the Eagles were to land a guy like this at 30, you're okay. You're okay down there at 30 with this pick. He's okay. 10? <laughs> 15 why would you pick a player that's that's evaluated at the bottom of the draft now hey remember something too guys like ray lewis that were taking in the 20s there were character comments same with sap there were character issues that's why they fell in the draft randy moss potsma all that other shit okay 39th best edge rusher, or excuse me, 39th best player. We're looking at edge rushers here. Isaiah Foske, Notre Dame. I don't draft anybody from Notre Dame. Zach Martin in who? Out of Notre Dame. Can you tell me? The, the kid from the Ravens, Hamilton. Who else? Who else? Zach Martin. The Hamilton kid looks decent. Who at Notre Dame is a star in the NFL? The reason Brian Kelly left is because those players are overhyped. <laughs> I'm talking in the NFL today. Not 800 years ago. Today. 
It's a different Notre Dame today. Joe Montana doesn't go to Notre Dame anymore. He goes to the Southeastern Conference. Funny, they don't go to Notre Dame. What quarterback has been decent since Joe Montana? Name me a quarterback that has come out of Notre Dame since Joe Montana. So again, a Notre Dame guy, I'll pass. Um, this is a guy from, uh, Barrett school. I don't know how to, uh, I, I, um, sorry for not pronouncing his name, right? Felix Aduki Uzma, 6'3", 255. The reason why I don't mind these edge rushers from the, from the big 12, because you get a lot of reps in the big 12. They throw the ball a lot, right? Okay. They throw the ball a lot. Okay? Um, So they get a lot of reps to rush the passer. The 46th best player in the draft is an edge rusher. Zach Harrison, Ohio State, 6'5", 274. Let me tell you something. See this guy, Zach Harrison? I love this kid. It's a quality pick. You're in the second round. And dude... Ohio State produces defensive linemen. It, 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 Ohio State produces great linemen on both sides of the football. That's a quality pick, and I'm not getting killed. Um, he was just overshadowed and injured at Ohio State. He's a good football player. I, I, I like him. I like him in round two. I think he's a good player, man. This kid from Auburn, too, Derek Hall. 6'3", 254, SEC kid, I'm all over it. I'm all over this. So Derek Hall, 6'3", 254, you get him in the second round. He's an edge rusher. Come in and help your football team. He's the 47th best player. I think, personally, guys, I think the draft goes down to about 55. I think it goes to about 55, and then the players after that, we're going to talk to Chris Landry about that. Okay. Second round is where Howie's had the luck. Second, third in there. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Ferno goes, you get Carter or Anderson trade 34 white Eagles will dominate for years. That would be an absolute grand slam. It'd be the best draft Howie's ever had if he d- did something like that. You see what Latin Inferno just said? If Howie was able to land, can you imagine landing Will Anderson and getting Devin White? Shit, man. It'd be the best draft he's ever had. That would be, that would be an, an amazing thing. Yell goes, you can't afford it. You can't afford. Devin White. Remember something. Devin White has got a fifth-year option, too, on his contract. He's got a fifth-year option. And I would say this to you. I don't think you can afford not to. You put a – you follow me, Yale. His contract and his salary pays off every year when you don't have to draft a linebacker. He's 25 years old. He's a three-year captain. He's won – Two straight division titles, NFC championship, and a Super Bowl. And he would be, and he's graded as the best interior line, best interior inside linebacker in the NFL. And you don't want that on your team, but you'll take a shot at a shitty Nicobe Dean. I'm not doing that. I shouldn't say shitty Nicobe Dean, shitty production so far from Nicobe Dean. The cap is whatever. You can shape it. That's right, Clay. That's right, Tone. The cap is Clay. Look at what Saint look at look at look at what the uh folks have done with the Rams and how they've maneuvered the cap around. You can shape it to what you want. 
Absolutely. And this is why, you know why you can afford, hey, do you know why you can afford Devin White? Because Jalen Hurts is going to allow you to. Because he's going to give you the team-friendly deal that we've been talking about. That allows you to do that. You can't get Devin White in Green Bay. Why? Because Aaron Rodgers is not willing to budge off his money or redo his deal. But Jalen is giving the Eagles the ability to do things just like this. Just like this. Okay. You caught me by surprise on that. Surprise on the had draft, draft comment yesterday. I wanted to talk some shit sills, but I couldn't come up with <laughs> it's all good, dude. It's all good. Okay? It's all good. All good, man. There's a few people in this draft that can help the Eagles. <clears throat> One of the old linemen probably is the lesser. Carter Anderson or trading down to get more picks. And then you trade 30 to get white. Remember something. Bucks need a quarterback. The Bucks need a quarterback. <clears throat> How do you know the Buccaneers don't go like this? Hey. <clears throat> and they get their boy Anthony Richardson from the Gators. Local town, local hero, Florida Gator. You put him in there. Would that be something the Bucs do? I don't know. You take Anthony Richardson at 10. Buccaneers call up and go, what do you want? I'll take Devin White. What else, what else do you want? Well, maybe I wanted to. How do you know you can't flip the script on the Bucs? Because at the end of the day, the Bucs, he wants a deal because why? It's not that he hates Tampa. He wants more money. You go to the Buccaneers, make it worth my while. The Bucs aren't going to be able to sign the guy. The guy wasn't want to play there anymore. He did his deal, got a Super Bowl. How do you know they don't call him? Howie and go, what do you want for the 10th pick? I'll take Devin White and a second rounder. That's too rich. Well, <laughs> the 10th pick has a lot of value. Yeah, you, know, you need a quarterback. There's Anthony Richardson sitting there. Hey, Jason Light. The clock is ticking. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? It's a different world than you called me yesterday. Come on, you pancake-eating mother. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do at 10? You want Richardson? Your dream guy? Florida Gator? People in the stands? Yeah, but we got Kyle Trask. Kyle Trask? Good luck. And you got Baker nobody. Dude, you got six quarterbacks under contract and you ain't got one that's worth a shit. Come on, man. Let me know. What do you want? I'll take Devin White in a second rounder. You can get your guy. And I'll even pay the damn plane flight to fly his ass in. <laughs> Come on, Jason Light. You conch eating. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. You grouper eating. Sons of B, let's go. Let's make this deal now. And you get your dream guy. Say it with me. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, say it with me. Anthony Richardson, say it with me. Come on. All right, I'm sending Devin White to the Eagles and a second pick so I could get the 10 to get my guy. You did good. You did good, Jeff. <laughs> You did good for both of us. Then how he turns around and trades the Oh, I don't like white for 10. <laughs> you, you don't like white for at 10 and you get a second rounder. You hear what that guy just said? Breed goes, I don't like white. Who's the best rated inside linebacker in the NFL. 
And the Eagles get a second round draft choice. He don't like that. But then as my friends would say, there's no pleasing you. <laughs> there's no pleasing you then. <laughs> I get Devin White in a second rounder. And you don't like that. All right. Okay. Let's see. You can get White for, th for a 30th. Yeah, but Yale, I can get White and a second round pick? Maybe more? Get the best inside linebacker in the NFL. Howie working his magic. Chris Landry in hour number three. We're going to break down the 2023 National Football League draft. Let me tell you a little bit about Chris Landry. Chris has been to almost every single pro day for all the top 20 players. He's seen them all. He breaks down the draft like nobody. I've known him 